Hello and welcome back to the Shiki Science Show. So today we're going to address the question, is epigenetic aging reversible? So understanding aging is a really exciting topic right now, with age being a major risk factor for multiple morbid morbidities. This video will take us on a journey from understanding the basics of epigenetics to how epigenetics can be used to determine biological age and whether by modifying epigenetic marks, aging can be slowed, or as seems to be suggested by this recent paper, reversed. So firstly, what is epigenetics? So there are many definitions of what epigenetics is, but in my mind, epigenetics includes all non-genomic information storage in cells. And so this includes understanding gene networks in which genes are expressed, it involves chromatin structure and also the post-translational modifications or PTMs to histone proteins. And so these modifications can involve methylation or acetylation. And so histone proteins are proteins that are kind of, DNA is wrapped around these histone proteins and that uh, creates chromatin and that makes up your nucleus. And these modifications are made either via proteins such as DNA or histone modifying enzymes or transcription factors, or via RNA such as non-coding RNAs that can also alter the epigenetic patterns. So that brings us on to what happens to epigenetic marks during aging. So type this into Google and you'll see an explosion of information. This really is a hot topic at the moment. And I've even talked about epigenetic changes in connection with the hallmarks of aging before in a previous video and I'll put the link to the video in the description for you. But in this video we really want to get to the bottom of what happens to epigenetic marks during aging and considering that epigenetic marks can be reversible, can we reverse these marks in an attempt to prevent or to slow down the process of aging? And so another thing that I think I failed to mention so far is that epigenetic marks can alter gene expression patterns and also how the cell responds to DNA damage and nuclear signaling. And so this is the implications of the epigenetic marks. So during aging, a variety of changes to the epigenetic marks have been seen. And so this includes global heterochromatin. So that involves compaction of the chromatin. There's changes in the histone marks and their modifications. There's also DNA hypomethylation on a global scale. And there's also hypermethylation, so increased methylation at these so-called CPG islands, which we'll talk about a bit more later. And so there's also histone variants, um, remodeling of the nucleosomes and changes in non-coding RNA abundance and histone variants, which is just different versions of histones. And so lastly, it's also thought that during aging, there's also relocalization of the chromatin modifiers themselves. And this idea has been put forward by David Sinclair and his lab focuses on understanding this process in more detail. And he also has a recent book out, which is all about um, aging and longevity. And so I kind of want to read that at some point, so I might do, I guess I probably will do. Um, anyway. Back to the point of this video. So what are the consequences of these changes in epigenetic marks during aging? So one thing is that these changes in marks, obviously they alter gene expression, but they can also result in genomic instability, which could increase the mutation rates and chance of cells becoming cancerous. And these gene expression changes can also um, allow regions of DNA that was previously silent, such as retrotransposons, to now be expressed, and that can have severe consequences for a cell. So given that we observe changes in epigenetic marks during aging, can we use and identify these epigenetic marks to determine somebody's biological age? So the concept that I'm describing here are also referred to as biomarkers. And so the idea is that we want biomarkers to identify and validate inter interventions that could extend the human health span and the lifespan. But to be regarded as a biomarker, it must uh, fulfill certain criteria for them to be valid. So these criteria include um, the biomarkers being a better prediction of lifespan than chronological age to so actual age. And it must be able to monitor a basic process that underlies the aging process, not just the effects of a disease. And so this is a challenging one because it can be quite hard to distinguish the effects of chronic diseases from 
normal aging. And also another criteria, it must be something that we could test repeatedly without causing harm to the patient. And lastly, it must also work in model organisms as a biomarker of age so that any interventions could first be tested in them before they're then applied to human testing. So using epigenetics as a biomarker for aging has also been referred to as the epigenetic clock because literally, I know time's ticking away, I guess. <laughs> I don't really know to be honest. <laughs> and now I've drawn a clock of ears. Anyway, these epigenetic clocks take into account the methylation status of millions of different CPG dinucleotides in the human genome um, because they have been seen to change with age. And so what's been seen is that the CPG islands, so they're called, get hypermethylated as you age. The methylation increases, as you can see in this graph here. And so by taking a sample of somebody's DNA and measuring the methylation status at various different CPG sites in the genome, you can use a mathematical algorithm to calculate their epigenetic age. And this epigenetic age can then be correlated with the chronological age to see whether or not this person has a positive or a negative association with their chronological age, as you can see uh, shown on this graph here. And I just also want to point out that there seems to be a rapid or more rapid increase in the methylation during growth and development. And so I actually stole this graph from a recent Nature of Few Genetics article. So I guess you can call me the sneaky science show today. Moving on, given that we can measure the methylation status and we know the epigenetic marks can be reversed, is it possible to reverse the epigenetic age? So as I mentioned earlier in this video, this paper seems to be the first report of an increase in predicted human lifespan uh, by currently accessible ageing interventions. And they have evidence that they have, in theory, reversed the epigenetic age. So what did they actually do? So this paper, they set up this TRIM, TRIM, TRIAL, tri TRIAL, I can't even speak, which stands for the Thymus Regeneration, Immunorestoration and Insulin Mitigation. And they did this in a select group of healthy men aged between 51 to 65 years. And they then used recombinant human growth hormone to try to prevent or even, well, as they say, to reverse the aging by regenerating and restoring the thymus. So why the thymus? So one of the characteristics of the aging process seems to be thymic involution, literally shrinking of the thymus. And this has the consequences of reducing the immune cell population and so thymic involution is linked to age-related increases in cancer, incidence, autoimmune diseases, inflammation, atherosclerosis and all-cause mortality and it's even been seen that centenarians have maintained immune function. So by targeting the thymus it seems plausible that you could prevent or slow down the aging process. And as I said, they use human growth hormone to do this, but because this has a consequence of inducing hyperinsulinemia, they also use two other compounds, metformin and DHEA as well, to try and counteract this effect. Although metformin, for example, is also uh, known to maybe have anti-aging effects. And in this trial, they used four different epigenetic clocks to give a readout or measurement of the epigenetic age to correlate it with the chronological age. So firstly, it's important to notice that they saw that the epigenetic age was lower than the chronological age, hence the negative scale on the axes. And interestingly, what they saw was that in all of the different age estimators that they used, the rate of aging regression accelerated after nine months of treatment. So obviously epigenetic age doesn't include all aspects of aging, but since it's currently our best measure of biological age, it's interesting and exciting to see these kind of results. The questions that, that, that they bring now is what is the mechanism of this reversal and what actually is the causes of the changes in the first place? So yes, this is a huge topic, but it gives hope that uh, slowing the process of aging could be possible for altering epigenetic marks. So thanks for listening.